So indeed, I will test my patience as a falconer. And this friend right here, this is my best friend until that happens. Now, um, coaching, mentoring a real red-tailed hawk. Um, it, once I get a red-tailed hawk of my very own, I will be enforcing negative reinforcements a lot. I want to let that hawk know that I'm the boss, okay? I, the hawk does as I, the hawk does as I say, okay? Nothing less than that. A lot of people just use positive reinforcements where they just feed the red-tailed hawk their kid bits and then it's happy. And then it always flies to the hand every time. This hand. Okay. But here's the thing. What if it just got lazy because it's always going to expect a reward no matter what? And it just decides, I'm not going to do this today. And let's just say the 50th try, it flies to the hand, where it's like 300 feet away, it decides not to do it. Well, if it takes that many tries, okay, and it's failed me, and it just wants to piss me off, I'm very mad when I'm pissed off, okay? You haven't seen me when I'm pissed off. I actually have a mild case of autism. So when things go wrong, I show it. I will scream. I will scream from the top of my lungs if I have to. I will scream so loud, the whole neighborhood will probably hear me. I probably shouldn't do that because it probably could hurt the red-tailed hawk's ears. But here's what I would do. I would try to control myself before I start lashing out and lock this troublemaker in the garage. Lights out. No dinner for you tonight. And then after 15 minutes, let it out of the garage and then continue training once again. And then if some point in time he doesn't cooperate, then lock him up in the garage for 15 minutes again. Keep doing this until I get results. Because I want this red-tailed hawk to be the best hunter I can possibly be. Not this red-tailed hawk, but a real red-tailed hawk. Okay. So yeah, so I want to be a good coach. I want to be a good mentor. I think I can do those things. I've never coached a person before, but I could sure coach a hawk. I sure can. And let me tell you something. I've got friends out there who really like me. Like, I've got two friends on Facebook. Just two. But one of them hasn't contacted me for at least a couple years. Because he's, like, gotten to an old age now. He's had surgery. And he just hasn't really had much time for social contact. And then another person just mentions they should get into real estate and... Um, real estate and something else all the time. You know, he, he just keeps mentioning this to me. And you know, who needs a human friend anyways? The only friend I need is a red-tailed hawk. We can both be great friends. So, here's the thing. I, my obsession over falconry has gotten so extreme that I just can't stop thinking about them when I'm at work. I was eating a lunch meat sandwich the other day, and then I looked at the meat on the sandwich. It was pink. I pull the top bread piece from the sandwich, and I just pick the pink stuff out in my hands, and I just, it starts, putting thoughts into my mind. It starts reminding me of the kid bits that falconers put out for their hawks when they fly onto the glove. 
Yes, I'm just that crazy over falconry. I have to think about it every single day, almost every single hour of the day, in fact, when I'm at work. And that's not healthy for me. I shouldn't be thinking about falconry if I'm at work, you see.